So, like many of you, I have a gazillion Danny memories. And I, I think there's certainly hordes of you out there who know how special Danny was. And this group today is, of course, just the subset of the many. But one of his most endearing qualities is that I think each of us felt like we were special to him. And he was friend to so many. But I personally am going to say that my special relationship was, in fact, more special than others, <laughs> um, at least to me. So um, other than immediate family, it was one of the longest and most enduring in my life. Um, there are a few people who had such an impact on me and really at so many phases of my life. How many people bring their cousin with them on their honeymoon? And I think actually there are several people here who can say <laughs> yes. Actually. <laughs> so I remember first uh, Danny when we visited Green Bay for Christmas one year uh, when I was maybe nine or ten years old. Um, cousin Julie and I became fast friends because we were closest in age and we were hanging out telling stories on the pullout sofa after maybe I don't know an hour hour and a half or more suddenly the mattress like boomed up from underneath. Apparently, uh, Cousin Danny had patiently been hiding underneath the mattress, <laughs> listening to everything and waiting for his moment to make uh, his entrance. And of course, within the next hour, he was blackmailing us. So um, I think that is Cousin Danny all over. So fast forward to Christmas 1981, which doesn't seem that long to me, but I know to some of you, especially in the front row, you all go, ancient history. Um, I was a freshman in college and I made my first trip to uh, to New York. Danny was in fact living at the YMCA, the one in the song, and I got a room there too. So he took me to my first Broadway shows. He took me to dance clubs, which were still a thing. The 80s uh, were, well the 70s weren't quite over, but um, we went to midnight diners, we went to the ballet, we went to classic cinema. Um, it snowed, it was completely magical, and um, I think our kinship was really born then at that time. So we were both snarky and cynical, for those who know me and of course Danny. We thought we were very, very sophisticated and hedonistic, and we loved all the same things. So we used to joke that great, great, great Grandma Lowenstein had uh, carefully sewn her shekels into her shmata as she was crossing the ocean um, with the goal that her descendants could eat, drink, and travel together. And we made a pledge that we would do that together forever. So he became both a destination and a second home. So I moved to New York finally in 1987. I was at the other end of the island. I was way up north. And on my first day, I headed out to uh, Coney Island with Danny. We went to the freak show, we went to Bar Brighton Beach for Russian food, and I felt like I had arrived where I was always meant to be. New York with Danny was home, and Brighton Beach became a favorite destination for us both, sort of a, mi a mix of kitsch, history, culture, decay, and pleasure, all things that he loved. I would visit Danny on weekends, and I would often bring friends with me. Danny's apartment in the East Village. Maybe raise of hands, who's been in said apartment? Yeah, so you know what I'm speaking about. It was widely known and loved by many, and it was amazing how many people could fit into that apartment. Um, we would all sleep there, or sort of sleep there overnight. We would go see drag shows at the Pyramid Club. We would go to music venues, go to bars and restaurants. Sometimes Julie and Kathy would come uh, to town. We would, uh, I still remember going to some art cinema with our own cocktail party um, and uh, dropping a bottle which rolled slowly down <laughs> the aisle. Um, I left to go home after like spending 48 hours with the, th uh, the three of them. Went way out to, uh, to go out actually on a date and then a few hours later found myself seated next at Fedora, you may recall suddenly at the very same restaurant seated next to all my cousins who just couldn't get away from them. So Danny and I also started traveling together in those years. I worked for a summer in Mexico City and he came and stayed. The housekeeper where I was living 
did not like me at all, but she loved Danny. She took him to the market, she taught him to cook, and uh, which was quite typical. We took a trip to uh, Puerto Rico where we ate ourselves sick on cuchifritos <laughs> and rum drinks and watched Brady Bunch reruns in our hotel room. We, uh, one year we rented a house in Key West for the Christmas holidays. We put up decorations, brought stockings for one another and did our best to celebrate. Danny would stay up all night out on the town. I would be up early, go out on hikes or kayaking or something active while he slept the day away. And we would overlap at cocktail hour, <laughs> drink martinis, eat shrimp, and uh, watch the entire Thin Man uh, film series before heading out to dinner. And that formed our pattern for many years to come. Danny was a man of the night. I am a person not of the night. <laughs> um, he, I would always uh, fall asleep on his futon wa while he watched movies through the night. We would go on small adventures, um, upstate with Pat, uh, graveyards around the boroughs. He was always a great fan of the great graveyards. Trips on the Staten Island Ferry, uh, trips to find Fiesta Ware. We developed a love of klezmer together. We were just talking about that, Julie. <laughs> and we sought out the klezmatics and other masters of the genre. I also got to know through Danny some rather extraordinary people, some of whom are here. So neighbor Tom, uh, Pat, who is sadly no longer with us, Anna Gretton Gerard, Anne, Ron, and Pete. Really quite remarkable people. And I have to say, Danny had a knack for collecting remarkable people. And I would say that a few of them might legitimately be called characters. Um, <laughs> but he also kept old relationships going in a way that I've always admired and never been able to quite replicate staying in touch with friends from elementary school and beyond. Everyone knows that Danny was the glue of the family, bringing together family branches who otherwise might not have been connected. My dad actually took Danny as his date to his Harvard's 25th reunion, not asking any of his children, I will say. Um, when I lived in New York, I got to see Julie and Kathy come in to, for visits. David, you and Marion never really came during those periods. You were probably terrified of what we would get up to. We were too So scared. we did get to see you honored at the uh, White House as one of the top teachers of the United States. I remember that very well. <laughs> Proud for the association. And of course, Danny started the wonderful tradition of uh, holding fantabulous birthday celebrations for major milestone birthdays starting at 40. His uh, 40th birthday in New York set the bar high. A theater, a bus out to a Russian club in Brighton Beach and a wonderful Sunday brunch. My own 40th was uh, completely organized by Danny in New Orleans. And we all know that he was a really amazing planner, anticipating every need down to the welcome bags. Of course, this was before kids. So we had the time and the will to spend hours selecting venues, planning events, creating gift bags, and orchestrating the entire event. By the time the party happened, my son was already sort of on his way. So I have to say that I think some of you in the audience might have had a better time at the event than I did. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it was a tremendous event and everyone had a great time. Um, the pattern had been established, and since then, I think we've done them in, what, Vegas, Austin, Dallas, Belgium, San Miguel de Allende, Maine, and of course, New York and New Orleans, even a second round. Danny spent uh, thousands of hours putting together a scrapbook of the New Orleans party for me. Um, it's a work full of art and memories. By the time he was done with it, though, he was so over scrapbooking <laughs> that he sent every bit of the tools of the trade to me and hung up his Michaels membership. <laughs> so, um, Danny did come to visit us when we were living in Washington, D.C., usually for Thanksgiving or Easter. He'd just been for one such visit when we said goodbye to him. He went into the city to explore and play, and that was fatefully when he was um, run over in front of Ben's Chili Bowl. I think many of you will remember that. I remember my fear when I was called by an ER doctor at Howard University Hospital. His blood pressure wouldn't come down and we were 
terrified. When he finally seemed to stabilize and could be relieved, it was a big relief, though I know that that recovery took a long time and required a surgery and a lengthy spa-like uh, recovery at the Andersons, if I'm not mistaken. He always put a positive spin, though, on the event, saying that the settlement he finally received allowed him to make that fateful career change to the chef life. Danny loved to complain about his job working as a registrar. According to Danny, and frankly, what I saw when I visit the office, he spent hours just playing Tetris um, and doing very little else. But um, for those of you who were part of the, uh, the kind of New York gathering by Zoom that was held last year, um, I heard from his former staff um, from you know 20 plus years ago that he was a kind and caring boss and very good at his job, I'm assuming. Nonetheless, when he was able to make the chef, shift to chefing, no longer just a hobby, I think it did transform him and was very liberating. The hours suited him and the opportunity to form relationships over food and drink with another group of people brought him so much joy. And he was so good at it. Not just the cooking, but in particular, the ability to build collegiality and relationships amongst a group of strangers, which I think was his magical superpower. We got to celebrate another milestone birthday in New Orleans for my 50th. Um, and on that occasion, I felt like the two sides of my family came together, um, the Stones and the Adamas, such that even John's, uh, my husband's more distant relatives became friends with uh, cousin Danny, and some of them are here. Um, I actually might've felt a little bit jealous of the regard in which my own in-laws held Danny he had an amazing ability to extend the feeling of family to so many people. As my son grew up and we moved again and again, we saw less of Danny. Once his landline stopped working, it did get harder to say, stay connected. Though 212-475-9658 is imprinted on my brain and probably the brains of many of you just like 2C. If you remember the mnemonic, we're going to see Danny, so. Not to be with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a family and an intense job took a lot of my focus and I feel like I lost some of that closeness to Danny. I regretted seeing and talking to him less, but he did seem to be living a rich life, teaching cooking and spending a lot of time out. We all know how well documented uh, those years were. He was probably the most over-the-top photographer of every meal and cocktail he consumed. <laughs> Once uh, my family moved to uh, South Carolina, Danny and I kept planning a trip to nearby Savannah, but it kept getting pushed off for this and that reason. Finally, when we were trying to get really concrete about it, he just wasn't feeling well enough about it. My last visit to see him in New York was really hard. I don't think by that time he had a proper diagnosis, but he wasn't right. And despite his efforts to cover, he wasn't really able to do any of those things that we'd always enjoyed together. It hurt my heart as nothing had to see him that way. New York is not friendly to people who are not young and strong and who have a lot of money. Danny's move to Wisconsin, to a place where he was loved and supported was so good to see. I know that only came through tremendous efforts from his siblings to make possible. He seemed to return back to old Danny. He sounded like himself on our calls. In my last conversation with Danny, the week before he passed, he was the most cogent and articulate I'd heard him in years. And we were able to share how much we loved and valued one another. Few have lived so thoroughly as Danny did in his 61 years. The memorial hosted by his New York City friends was an incredibly moving testament to how many lives Danny touched. While he may have been the life of the party, Danny's influence was clearly felt by his employees, his students, his friends, his family, and even just acquaintances. His small kindnesses made a difference to many. But I can only speak to what his life And our loss 
feels to me on a personal level. In times of trouble, I always knew that Danny would be there. Though he could be judgmental on the surface, and I'm pretty sure you all know what I mean. <coughs> I knew that what, no matter what I'd done or said, Danny would be there at 170 